We're doing it. We're here. All tactical games veterans. Yeah. Doesn't mean that we're... Well, you are. It's just fun to, it's just fun to compete. Some of us yeah. are good at it. Like Matt. Good, no. The Matts. <laughs> no, no, it's just fun stuff. It doesn't even matter. Like, honestly, um, I know people get competitive with it, and so do I, but, man, it's such a fun sport. Yeah. I mean, that's the... That's the main thing, you know, I think is going and it's good training. It's good to have something. You know, I've always thought through my fitness journey, if I have something that I sign up for, like I train a lot harder because there's no way that I want to drop out of that thing. And so I think just for all of us, that's the main motivation, right? Is just signing up for something and scares you a little bit to where you're like, oh crap, I got the tactical games coming up. I got to hit the gym and I got to be consistent and I got to go train. And I don't know, that's how it is for me. And I think as we've talked, that's the same with you guys, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You have a goal. And so you, yeah, your, your day to day decisions kind of are affected by this thing you've got looming. And sometimes it's, you know, if you're not doing what you want to be doing, it gets, it stresses you out. How did you feel uh, preparation wise coming into this one? <clears throat> I felt good because I've lost some weight. I've lost 15 pounds in the past several months. And um, I felt really good, you know, training wise. And Yeah, you were pretty fat before. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was a little bigger. I'm still chubby. but <laughs> Whatever. You know. no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> totally, right. I'm totally kidding. Like a workhorse on, from day one, any of them that you've gone to, you just put in the work, man. You just keep keep pushing and yeah it's a little along, easier I, I usually find some kind of a stride when i'm doing a workout you know that i it's like okay i can just keep doing this for a while and so that's that's how i go and it is easier with you know without 15 pounds but i basically lost my weight vest in weight that's dang cool so now i'm just i'm i'm at break even when i'm wearing the weight vest heck yeah, yeah that's right that's true I that's think that's awesome. So this, so you guys just got back from the St. George Tactical Games, right? It was in Utah. The first one that both of you have done for this year, right? For 2023. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, so Matt, you did, was last year your first year getting involved in tactical, yeah. doing tactical uh, games? Yeah, was it last? Yeah, it was last year. Last year in St. George again. Okay. And that's the same with me. That was the first one yeah. that I'd ever done. That's the first one. And then Tyler, you've done, you did that some in 2021. Is that right? Uh, or when did you get started? Well, I actually figured that out the other day because I was, I was talking with, <clears throat> I get these two mixed up, uh, red beard dude. Like the pink shorts red beard dude? Nope, nope. Oh. Red, red beard dude that's in, char- <laughs> in charge. Uh, Jake? Jake. Oh. Yeah, I was talking with Jake. And I said, yeah, I started in 2019 in Price. And he's like, we started in Price in... 2020 so i started oh. in 2020 in price utah yeah in price utah. oh really hmm. that's cool yeah so 2020 so this was my seventh so 2020, my seventh games 2021 2022 and 2023 so this is yeah. going on to your fourth year of doing it yeah sweet yeah. that's awesome yeah and this one was probably my favorite yeah that i've done yeah so the big announcement from t- the tactical games this last year was that they got sponsored by Under Armour, mm-hmm. right? Under Armour is now their official sponsor. They had some pretty good sponsors before, but did you guys feel like there was a different vibe or anything this year because of that or just, just the shirt? Kind of similar? The shirt was a really nice shirt. I like the shirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the, the shirt, I mean, nothing against tactical games or under armor but it is kind of funny i'm pretty sure they were just surplus shirts and they put the low they put the tactical games logo right over top of the, oh really uh, under armor logo so <laughs> oh, really? my wife noticed it immediately she's like they just put that right over top of the under armor logo really which is fine like it's it's Why all good you put it on the other side she have under armor and tactical exactly game. yeah yeah yep. interesting yeah huh. but really cool shirts is it like the good Under Armour fabric yeah, and that kind really of stuff? Nice mm-hmm. Yeah, really nice fabric, yeah. And in that heat, it would have been a good shirt. We had we had shirts planned out, though. We're there like, you go. We're like ladies Heck that plan, yeah. plan out our shirts. Uh, yeah, we wore some Teton CrossFit camo yeah. shirts. and My shirt had salt deposits on it after I got done. I sweated so much salt, it like had white 
That's a lot of salt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it did. Well, it was pretty funny. And is, you were drinking a lot of salt. Yeah, we were drinking a lot of salt. It is cool, though, because from kind of from day one, you've always had, like a mini team of tactical games people that yeah. have gone from Teton CrossFit yeah. to go down and compete. So it is cool. You always have a few guys, and and it's fun. You know, last year when I we went to some competitions together and stuff, it is fun to have guys there that are, For sure. are from, you know, you work out together. Um, you know, and so it's trained to get like last summer we went and shot a whole bunch together. So it was fun yeah. to have training, training buddies and then go compete. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And <clears throat> if anyone can ever bring a camper, that is the way to do it. Yeah. You save so much time in driving and sleeping and having a home base that you can go lay down, get in the air conditioning, warm up a meal. So did you just stay there at, at nighttime? You stayed right there too? Yeah. Just in the parking lot or something? Yeah. They had space you could park? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope that's something that always continues with the tactical games because it is so, so convenient to have that home base. Take a shower, mm-hmm. microwave, air conditioning. It's... We don't even it's, sound it's like competitors. Yeah. We don't even it's, sound yeah. like competitors at this point. <laughs> We're like, we love camping. We're going to hang out. I can't imagine camping, getting in a tent or something. And the the, the one night, it, the wind blew so hard, it, I thought it was going to pick that camper up. Hmm. But it was crazy. I can't did, imagine being in a tent. And, did and it that. die down during the day? Yeah, during the day it was okay. It it, it came up a couple times, but and and blew people's tents. They have those little microbursts, and so they they grab your tent and rip it up and then it rained and that's what caused kind of that little flash flood mm. on the river when we when i did the run in the morning there was the rivers were totally dry these little washes and then when tyler then in the no. afternoon people were coming by with with wet you know wet up to their thighs and it's like oh man and by the time tyler went it was kind of by up, up to your ankles or your knees hmm. so it had died down some those rivers but it was they washed out and the, those guys had to run past them. Yeah, it, it was pretty cool. Like, it was. Pretty it didn't cool. bug me at all. I was like, "Hey, this is this is life." You know, you got ups and downs and mm-hmm. peaks and valleys. We just happen to be running running through a river right now. <laughs> Wet shoes. What was the temperature? Well, so and this was a different range than last year. Yeah, we we were kind of like northwest or northeast of St. George, like kind of out in the Washington area. Wasn't this? This was a different range, right? Yeah, it was. It, it was still considered Washington, yeah, right? Similar, similar area, but a totally different range. <clears throat> yeah, very different range. Um, yeah. Like the Ben Avery, Avery range is like kind of pristine. I think that's the one in Phoenix. Oh yeah, that's right. Am I right? Uh, I'm trying to think what the one last. Yeah, year what was is that called. one called? It was. It was like a gun club something. That was other. a really nice range. Yeah, last yeah they were this, great. This one maybe wasn't quite as nice but it was still great it was, yeah it still had everything and just different like yeah. the range officer said that they do night vision training there. okay stuff like that well and it looked like you were more the one last year you were kind of i mean there was stuff around where they had to build up big berms and stuff you know so you're kind of right kind of in gravel sand hills you guys looked like you were out in like the red rocks and stuff yeah. a little bit more yeah, scenic of kind stages, of one of the stages kind of went up a canyon mm-hmm. and as you walk up this little canyon you're shooting at things and it was it was really cool it looked yeah, cool really neat. like it, it yeah it looked like an awesome area so what do you think the temperature was i mean was it 80s, hot high 80s yeah it was, it was hot. hot yeah yeah, yeah. and then the one the one afternoon the second afternoon it rained and it got a little bit cloudy so that helped it kind yeah, of rained for like nice. 60 seconds and brought the temperature down a little bit. That's, I was, when they, uh, when I had heard, because last year the St. George one was in March, I believe, which is perfect down mm-hmm. there, right? May, it's starting to get a little bit warmer yeah, down there. Yeah, so I was, I was curious how that was. Yeah, but. it was good. It, it could have been a lot hotter, but the weather was kind of within our favor, except for the wind. There were a few times <clears throat> where it was blowing people's targets up, and when a target gets blown yeah. away, then they just get all the points, and then I feel like uh, like it should have happened to me. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. We had that same thing happen in Oregon last year. Like yep. a big gust came through, and on a couple stages, everybody's targets went, uh-huh. you know, but those weren't any of the stages that we ours, were on. Yeah. So <laughs> you're like always in the back of your mind, you're going, man, is that going to skew it enough to affect results, you know? And anyway, but yeah, interesting. Well, if you want, we can actually just 
kind of go through all the stages yeah. and uh, chat about them a little Let's bit. I won't read the whole stage, but we can just kind of talk the loadouts and the firing sequence and then just describe the stages. You good with that, Matt? Yeah. So what about preparation this year? I mean, just I'm curious this year versus what we've done last year. Because last year, ahead of time, we shot quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Like we were going down to the um, USPSA. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was, matches yeah. and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, hitting the gym a lot. I mean, how did you guys feel your preparation was this year versus previous years or, or whatever going into it? I'm about the same. I, I, I went and did one of those USPSA earlier this spring, and it was it was a blast. Those are those are way fun. Um, so that that helps you get some a little bit practice competing. You know what it's like when the when the timer beeps, and when that timer beeps, your brain starts to get you know move a lot faster. You just, it just changes the mindset of it. There's some pressure there. Yeah. And then I went to out here just to our local range a few times. I did one of the Wednesday night steel challenges and that was fun hmm. and i just watched a lot of youtube videos and tried to get better at shooting but it didn't help i'm still <laughs> did you change any of your equipment up no no but and, but i realized that i should have put a red dot on because they oh. if i would have read the rules they changed it from last year to to my category you can use a red dot now so yeah i got doing my first stage and i was looking around and all these guys have red dots i was like what 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 mm. happened here? Yeah. It's insane. That the was difference. a change. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. Difference it does. And I have one. Insane. Yeah. I've put it on before, but then I took it off to do these games. So, yeah. I think I'm going to put it back on. Elite's the only one that you can't have red dots. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there were even a couple of elites that were like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to change. Oh, really? Yeah. But mm. who knows? I don't know the in and outs of yeah. the tactical games mm. at all. So, did, and so what division were you in? Were you in the master's in, division? Yeah, master's division. Four, 40 plus. 40 plus. I'm 47. So. The old guys. Yeah. But, you know, I've read a lot of stuff on, like, the Facebook groups and stuff, and they're like, master's division is they're no, tough. They're no joke. Yeah. I mean, you've got some of those guys like Kirk that yep. I think competes in a master's division, and, I mean, those guys are legit. Yeah. They've competed for a long time, so... The That's weights, awesome. the the one, the hardest, one of the hardest parts was carrying this. We did the, uh, one of the floaters. You had to carry a Husa felt stone. Hmm. And for these guys, it was a hundred pounds. For me, it was 150. Wow. That was tough. Huh. That was yeah. one, that was one of the, that was probably the toughest physical one. I was just totally, I mean, my back was just, I could barely pick the thing up and then walk with it. And then, you know. 150 it, pounds. It, yeah, was it got tough. that got tough, and I I made it all the way there and back, and I got to looking. If I would have, I think a lot of guys made it back. If I would have like turned around and gone ten more feet, I would have placed a lot higher than I did hmm. in that in that event. But that was I was spent. It was basically all I had in me to carry that thing. It was tough. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I didn't realize that the that there was that big of a jump in the masters. Weights yeah. and stuff like that. Usually but there isn't. You, it, that's why I started doing it. I was like, yeah, I might as well just go to masters. It's basically the same thing as as uh, intermediate. But this one was different. That that one was a significant difference. Hundred to one hundred and fifty pounds. Tyler made it there and back and there and back. And I think part of part of the way there again, or most almost all the way there. Yeah. Hmm. And I've crazy. I've whew, that was tough, just to pick it up. One, you know, one or two times I set it down on my kind of bent over and took some big breaths and then to pick it back up again was a huge effort Yeah. to, you know, spent a lot of energy just picking it back up to where I could start walking again. Yeah. Well, of, I mean, you think about the bear hugging 150 yeah. pounds and picking, I mean, that's an achievement to even be able to do that. Exactly. Yeah. Just to pick it up. It. Yeah. I felt good really? that I was able to pick that up. You know, I'm I mean, a pretty big guy and stuff, but that's a lot of weight, uh, you know, before I started getting doing crossfit and being fit i mean there's no way to, to pick up that it's that was a significant amount of weight for me mm -hmm. it's cool how about did you um what about like preparation yeah. and did you switch up any of your equipment from last year or anything like that um i did throw a red dot on and spent some time dialing that in um <clears throat> equipment as far as ar-15 that was the same but um, I went in and spent a lot of time learning closer distances. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm zeroed at 50 
and I wanted to know where the bullet would be at 25 and 15 and 7 and 5. So spent a lot of time on that. Probably should have spent more time, well, or as much time, you know, going from 50 to 200 and what's in that range and then 200 plus. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can throw throw it into apps and we're just texting some friends and stuff. Um, so shooting, I definitely could have prepared more. Um, but naturally, I'm a decent shooter. Um, but I, I need to prepare more. Uh, physically, I've never felt better. Mm. I felt like more of a competitor in this tactical games than any other one of them. Which is cool because I still didn't do that well. But, but um, that was due to mistakes that can be fixed. Yeah. And so it was cool to to still not place where I wanted to place, but know that it was literally like something that can be fixed next time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So it was fun. Well, I think that's important. You mentioned the, you know, those shorter distances. One thing that happened to me last year at a match was there was a target. It was a, it was in Oregon and it was the, uh, floater the whatever it was you know and th the target was 10 feet away yeah with an ar-15 and i thought oh you know 10 feet away just point at it and shoot and but it, it hit like three inches low yeah and so one of my one of my uh rounds actually didn't get scored because it was just barely below the so i mean that's super important have a good range of ranges that you can accurately yeah. shoot at quickly well that's one of the cool things i mean what sport do you shoot from five feet to 500 yards mm -hmm. you know you got to learn all of that you're taking short pistol shots and long pistol shots and one difference this time though matt and i were talking uh there wasn't a lot of awkward shooting mm -hmm. yeah usually they put you in some kind of an awkward position you know you work out you get stressed that way and then you have to go up to a thing and be in an awkward position where you're not quite kneeling and not quite sitting, not quite standing, and you're just kind of sitting there strained. But this time it was all pretty pretty natural shooting positions. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, usually there's triangles and circles and squares and yeah, ladders and all that. This but there time. was no left hand shooting. Usually there's, nope. you know, hold it with your huh, yeah. There was one uh one-handed shot where you're holding yeah, that a, was awkward. A jerry can in the other hand, in the other hand. Oh, that was weird. I actually think I could have shot Had better. A counterweight uh -huh. pulling on you. Yep, I think I could have shot better without the jerry can in my hand. Sure. Um, <laughs> but I actually wondered too if I switched them and shot left-handed. Yeah, left maybe. Can. I don't know. It was just weird because it was like you know usually I can hold it one-handed, and there's just this little ring you know maybe like the size of a quarter. This one was like six inches. Yeah. Like, oh, I Plus you're know breathing. I to shoot. You're breathing hard. You're holding a jerry can. You're shooting with one hand. So that that was an awkward one. Hmm. But usually there's like some left-handed ones and some where you're looking through a little, you know, they have those those barricades and so you're looking through one of those little barricades to try and shoot. Yeah. And you have to turn your gun sideways. <laughs> and so there wasn't any anything really bad like that. That's what. Yeah. You know when I. And there were more, you know, when I looked at my target afterwards and there were more, more holes out of the target than in, that's why it's more frustrating. It's like, I'm just standing here shooting. Why can't I get all of these in? You know? Yeah. When you're awkward and stressed, uh, you, then you're like, oh, yeah, I did the best under the circumstances. But I looked at this one and it was so frustrating. That's so interesting. It's such a mind game. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Shooting is great for mindset and focus and all those things you know yeah. you think it's purely a mechanical physical thing maybe and it's not it's mostly mental yeah know? very mental in fact so. do you guys do you guys just want to we talked about preparation maybe we could just go through the stages and kind of how we felt about them and what we yeah. could have done better and what we did good and i don't know i don't know if those will For help sure. people it'll yeah you bet yeah. <clears throat> so stage one was called throw and go 100 points uh the loadout was five magazines um Eight rifle, eight pistol, firing sequence, pistol first, uh, throw bag must be held in the hand while shooting, and then rifle position is uh, shooter's choice. So pretty much what happened is at the time of go, you do seven reverse throw 
bags, like sandbags, over the yoke. What do you think? It's up over your head. Yeah, seven feet. Yeah. Seven-ish right. feet. Yeah. This one looked kind of awkward. It was. Because you're trying to look backwards and yeah, make sure do. it's not going to yep. fall on you, your head. You look up at it as it goes over. You look back over You have head. to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was something I'm grateful that someone told me. They're like, look back at the yoke. Mm -hmm. And if I did that, I could get it over it. But if I didn't do that, then it wouldn't go over. How big of a, how heavy was the sandbag? Probably 50. Yeah. Not, not really? super heavy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get tired. You know, you do seven of them and you're mm -hmm. tired. Mm -hmm. And then you carry, you farmer carry that up to the shooting line. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing you have to hold while you shoot the pistol. In the so you hand. started out doing the seven up and over the oak, throwing them, and then you have to farmer carry it up to mm -hmm. the firing line. Yeah. And it looked like, did you have magazines on the ground or something? Uh, yeah. You didn't have them in your yeah, in your right. pouches? Those were staged. Yeah, you had to collect them each round. Okay. You had to run up and grab them and put them in your belt could each you, round. Could you do that like, so say you threw it over the top, grab your mags, carry it down like that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yep. Yeah. And then the next time you come back, throw it again, grab yep. your mags yep. and put them in. You could do it before or after, but one of their things were we do not remind you to oh. grab your mags. So if you get back down to the firing line and you forgot your you're mags, you're screwed and you got to run screwed. back and get them. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So just kind of kind of fun. It went from 7 to 5 To three, and then yep. back to five, then, then back to five, then to seven, then to seven. The last yep. one was seven again. Yeah. So five rounds of that. No, no, it was just four. No, that was five rounds. Yeah, it had a twelve-minute time cap, <clears throat> and yeah, just had a twelve-minute time cap. It's always interesting to me the time caps, even in CrossFit. Like a lot of things, you look at it and you're like, "There is no way that I'll be able to get that done in that amount of time." And then most of the time you do. And then there's others that you're like, oh, this is going to be easy to get mm -hmm. done in that amount of time. And you never do. You know, it's just, yeah. it's interesting, the mind game of it. Yeah. yeah, And just the the awkwardness of this one, you know, you're throwing stuff up and over your head. So you're using some different muscles and then you're using unilateral movement to get that bag down to the end and then hold it while you're trying to hold a stable pistol. So very, very different. And so you're 36 rounds rifle 36 rounds pistol or wait no that was the other one i was just looking at yeah five, five by eight. eight five by eight so you're 40 pistol 40 rifle how far away were the targets on that one about 100 yards with the rifle and then 10 maybe with the with the pistol with the pistol so no maybe five five between five and ten with the pistol yeah but, yeah i didn't feel like any of the pistol shots were super far no and was it just one circle or like one target no, you had was, to get them in, or it did was they four have circles different? or five circles in the target yep. yeah. on the on the piece of paper? Yeah, and the second the rifle paper was just one one big, box, big yep. box. Yeah. Hmm. Well, and one thing to mention is the penalties on, or kind of how it's scored. I mean, you're scored on time, but then you're also scored on shooting and any shots outside of the circle, or. I guess if you have four targets on that one sheet of paper, they tell you how many you have to have in each one. Yeah. And for every one that's not inside that circle, you get docked a minute. So, I mean, that's a, right? Isn't it a minute mm. per shot? I think uh, it's usually 10 seconds. 10 seconds, yeah. Oh, is it 10 Eight. seconds? Yeah. Oh, Depen I was Depending on. So, so, but some even, things have different ones. So, yeah. even then, I mean, beating somebody by two minutes or a, a minute even on a workout is a huge deal. But say you miss six shots and they got those six. Yeah. That that makes it up right there. Yep. You know? yep. So I mean it's 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 huge. Yeah, it's, it's pretty a big crazy. Deal. There there are some guys that, you know, they look really good and they're in really good shape. And you're like, Man, this guy's gonna do really well. And a lot of times they do really well. But a lot of times they don't, you know, so it just you know, they might win all the workouts but they miss a lot of shots and so it Yeah. You know. I usually don't win any workouts, but I must make more shots than some of these other guys because I beat some guys. So, yeah. Well, and I've seen, I, um, I have seen this, but then I also have seen it talked about a lot in like the the Facebook groups and stuff. That a lot of times the guys that look the best, like giant arms, you know, and just look absolutely ripped, 
don't have the endurance that they need yeah. or the or the shooting that they need to to be able to be competitive in it you know and yeah. so there is something to be said for if you don't think that you look like you're fit or an athlete or whatever like don't let that stop you or, or intimidate you from going into a competition because a lot of times that is not i mean the guys that are on the podium the most aren't the guys that are looking absolutely mm -hmm. ripped and chiseled and everything no. you know no. I mean, it's just not the case no it's sometimes actually, yes you know it just kind of depends sometimes yeah <clears throat> It is interesting, uh, but the, the cross different. doing CrossFit is, I think, the good, the best. I agree. Conditioning, yep. You know, because it's CrossFit is you know short, high intensity things, and that's what these games are. Yeah. Except for the run. Yeah, and in CrossFit, you're pretty much always trying to go as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. What's nice there is you're trying to slow down to make really good shots, so then it makes the workout easier. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, I usually try and slow down, you know, instead of, like, running my bag down, I try and walk it down and, like, take really deep breaths so that I'm not tired. I'm not, like, redlined by the time I get down there to take shots. So, and then I usually shoot better. Yeah. And, I mean, you think about that. Say a guy next to you ran and you walked and really focused on breathing the whole time so that you got good oxygenation in your blood or whatever, that guy beat you by what? Five yeah. seconds? Ten well, seconds? I mean, maybe he beat maybe. you by a couple minutes, but, you know, mm -hmm. if, if afterwards you go and look at his target and there's hardly any holes in it, then it's kind of yeah. like, you know, yep. you, you do well. And I, I, had, I had a lot of time to spare on this one. This is why it was so frustrating. I was like, I've got all kinds of time to spare. So I just sat there for like, 20 seconds and just breathed and then I picked up my gun and started shooting miss 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 just taking my time I'm like okay so take your time that's mm -hmm. so I, which, which one was that that was the around the world where oh, you drag right. the sled yeah. yeah I had plenty of time I wasn't gonna get time capped and I was like I'm gonna place these shots and so I'm sitting there trying to just relax and just pull the trigger straight back and just everything right and it was missing yeah. every single one so mad so i don't know what was going on there hmm. just having a rough time yeah which just happens <laughs> i mean we all go to those competitions and there's always a mistake <laughs> yeah <clears throat> so i i wish i knew what mine was i need to get you know get with somebody who can help me shoot better i took a picture of that target and i was like i don't want it to look like this ever again that's awesome. <laughs> this is this is dumb. Well, I mean that's that's a huge part of it. Recognizing yep. that hey, this is something I need to work on, and then figuring out the things to do it. So yep, for sure. I agree. Um, my first stage um, was that your first stage? Yeah, that was mine. Okay, so we were in different divisions. Uh, my first stage was stage two, which was called intervals. You had four magazines nine rifle nine pistol and uh, it was from unsupported standing position uh, athletes have four sections of work followed by rest during the sections athletes will earn points by doing physical work uh, three points per five yards and then go to the firing sequence line and as well as doing uh, hand release burpees over the bag so this is the one where we we pulled the bags yeah, right. You pulled so, it towards you, yep. rolled it, and then you faced it and rolled it back the other way. Yeah, pulling it towards you is quite a bit easier. Yeah, you, you get a little bit extra pull on it towards you. Was it like a wall ball looking thing, like no, a sandbag, a regular sandbag? Sand. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. So the weights for that, the elite were two fifty, elite women were two hundred, uh, men's forty plus was two hundred, tactical women were one fifty. Uh, 150 for men's 50 plus women's intermediate 75 so it was men's intermediate oh 150 yeah hmm. so, so that was it was tiring it was, yeah it was draining too my first round was super slow like i didn't even get to my pistol and then i just sped up like a rabbit or something and um yeah, that ended he, up placing. He got high, really fast. Yeah, ended up placing higher in that workout than in what, the other one. What do you mean you didn't get to your pistol? Did they only give you a certain um, amount of time per round? Yeah, to yeah. that yeah. one had a time thing. cap for each round, and then yep. a, a mandatory minute rest. 
At the oh, wow. end of Sweet. two minutes, athletes will stop working or shooting, reset, and get ready for round two. Hmm. If an athlete fails to complete the work of that round, they will take minus three points for every five yards not completed. And then your shots, too, right? You yeah. get docked your yeah. shots because they're not exactly. on your target. Yes, that was a really interesting one. Fun because you had to get the work done in order to shoot, and then you could earn bonus points if you did both quickly. Hmm. If you if you dragged the bag, if you rolled the bag there and back, did all your shooting, and you still had time, you could do burpees. All for extra. I did zero. I did zero. As well. <laughs> yeah, there's kind of some strategy there, right? It's I like, didn't have time to do, do you, it anyway. But how much do if, you burn yourself out? Yeah. You know, yeah. it just kind of depends on how much energy you have left. And, you know, there, probably there's some strategy, strategy, too, if you take your time on your shots and place all your shots. You know, you miss one shot. It's you 10 know, that's, seconds. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, you get... Yeah, it's 10 seconds. So I don't know how many burpees you'd have to do to make up 10 seconds, but not worth it. I'd rather do the shots. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about one workout where we could... If we finished within the 12 minutes, we could do extra work. And every time that you put a sandbag up and over the yoke, you got one point. But then you're also getting tired for the second part of the workout, which was nine minutes. So it really was kind of uh, maybe one of the most strategic tactical games that I've been to as well. Hmm. Yeah, kind of. you got to figure out if you'd rather get points by um, doing a farmer carry, a suitcase carry. Or get points by lifting a sandbag over a bar. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Third stage was called was called Around the World. Three magazines, 12 rifle, 12 pistol. Rifle anywhere on the tank trap, but cannot go prone. Pistol was freestyle, but cannot brace on the tank trap. On the call of go, athletes will pick up the axle bar in one hand. You go around in a big box... You come back, go down to your firing line, do your firing sequence, come back, grab a sled, drag a sled around a big square, shoot, come back, do that single arm farmer carry again, all the way around that big square, and then go down and do your, your uh, firing sequence. That one, um, did you hold the farmer carry in your same hand the whole time? Yeah. I yeah, me too. My left hand so that it would... Yeah. So my right hand would be fresh. And it wasn't that very heavy either. Yeah, it that was, probably that was, only what was cool. 30 about or 40 pounds. It. Yep. That farmer carry. So it was. Yeah. I did switch hands. Like I used my left hand the first time, right hand the second time. You know, because I don't want asymmetrical muscles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to, you know, leave the games and have big, huge muscle. Yeah, under. exactly. <laughs> For sure. But that was a fun one. That was nice because you could rest your rifle right on that tank trap. Yep. And so you'd have a good rest. Good shooting. Yeah. That's the one where I just hit almost all of the my pistol ones outside of the circles. How far away were the shots on that? Seven yards for pistol. Uh-huh. Not very far. I should have been hitting every single one. Hmm. And I didn't. How far was the rifle? You will next time. <laughs> the rifle probably, I don't remember. It was maybe... 75. 75? Yeah. Oh, and you were able to rest it. So mm -hmm. yeah. both of those were That pretty... was pretty easy rifle shooting. Yeah. Could you rest the pistol on the tank trap? Not that one. You that had one to had standing. to be freehand. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Freehand, but you know that's what I practice a lot. Is just exactly getting. You know, I was like, oh yeah, this will be. Um, this is what I'm used to. This shouldn't be a problem. Mm hmm. Hmm. It so. is interesting how just sometimes in competitions things don't make sense, right? It's yeah. Like, oh well, I did really good on that, and I wasn't necessarily thinking I would, and you know, vice versa. I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, it, it is weird because, you know, there were a couple where I would ask. I'd be like, hey, uh, so compared to others, like, how, how did I do? And on that Husafelt stone one, um, the guy told me, he's like, dude, anything over 600 feet, like, you're going to be top 10%. And mm. I was like, holy crap, I crushed that. I got 713 feet. But then once I actually got in and looked at the numbers, I was like, I did not crush that. Mm. You know, I thought I did. I felt like I did. I felt like I was going fast, but... I mean, you gave it your all, you know, yeah. you, get, you left it all there on the table. Yeah. How did you feel about competition versus the other, like, previous years? I wondered if, you know, is there a spotlight on the tactical games now to, since Under Armour sponsored it and stuff that it's drawing out more people or uh, other people? I mean, did you feel like the the 
competition was about the same or it looked like the divisions were about the same number of people yeah. kind of as before. Maybe same number of people, but I actually feel like competition is getting stiffer. I do too. That or I'm getting worse. But, you know, <clears throat> if I would have competed like I did last weekend at my first competition in price, I, I would have podiumed. Mm-hmm. You know, just, I, I mean, not, not to like say that in a... Mm-hmm. boastful way it's just that's how it is like this competition is just getting steeper and steeper yeah i wondered that with the kind of the spotlight on it now i think they're getting a lot more people out of the other shooting sports out of three gun out of uspsa yeah there, there was one guy in my division who you know just by looking at him i wouldn't have picked him to be in the top three you know not that he was you know looked out of shape or anything but he wasn't winning any of the workouts you know he was he was in a heat with just one other guy, and the other guy was always beating him. And I was like, well, that, this must be that guy's first time. Well, he ended up on the podium, and I, and I looked, and I was looking at He won, like, the – there was one that was kind of a two-gun, so hardly any workout, and he won that one first. So I'm, mm. he's probably used to doing three-gun or USPSA or, you know, has a good level of fitness, but not the most fit, fit guy there, but good, good shooter. He must have hit – you know most of his shots got through the workouts gutted through them and then hit all of his shots so i think there's <clears throat> there's probably a lot more people coming from the other shooting sports you know when you and i've gone to the, those uspsa ones there's some fast shooters at some of those and like i mean i'm not competitive at those at all and so some of those guys you know if they're if they can get kind of their baseline fitness to where they can compete in this they'll you know it makes it really tough to compete against them. They're good. Some good shooters out there. And the tactical games really is turning kind of two-gun. I mean, they, I think they have some dedicated two-gun competitions. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's definitely something to, to think about. There's been a lot of, it's been interesting to see the people come from CrossFit into there too. Yeah. Like you have a lot of, like Jacob Hepner, Cody Anderson, you have some of these guys that are, you know, started off in CrossFit. They were really good CrossFit af- athletes, and then they're coming into tactical game yeah. now too. So there's yeah. some of that as well. I mean, it's a pretty nice transition because their fitness is far above everybody else's. So if they can learn to shoot fast, <coughs> yeah, you know, like, and accurately, uh, and, yeah. yeah, get the shoot yep. part down exactly. So, but you know, it's interesting too. Um, there were some heavy bags. So you got yeah. Cody Anderson, who was a games athlete. You know, there was a 250-pound bag. Mm-hmm. And I saw that. He's, he's a small, I mean, I'm an amazing competitor, uh, very strong. I mean, he's elite in every way, shape, and form, but that bag's heavy. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to see the progression there as well. Was that like the floater fitness workout, or was that on a stage? Um, that, well, That was a stage. That yeah. was, no, that was the two-parter. Yep, the one where you put the sandbag up and over the oak. Oh, that I mean, was that was really interesting. When do we get to talk? When is that one? Uh, it's in, in the order. We'll it's in just that. a little bit. Yes. Yeah, so. Well, we'll talk about it. No, let's keep going. Through we can it skip we'll to, get it. to it. Yeah, we'll get to it. Okay, so um, this stage I I actually thought was really fun. Um, it was called the carbine stage plus the long movement. It was worth two hundred points because it was actually broken up into two separate scores. Your first part was the carbine. Um, uh, part there's no pistol in it and since i only have a single retention uh holster Hmm. uh, matt lent me some coban and i oh there you go coban my gun all up so um the firing sequence and the stage description athletes will start with their toes on the stick on the call of go athletes will enter the field of play and engage all paper targets on the path athletes must drop and retain their magazine rack out chain so pretty much you're going down you're shooting a bunch of targets and then clear your rifle then you go up this ladder and you do was it four five five Five. targets as many shots as you need yep so you're shooting you go from shooting you know five and ten yards away as you kind of run along this trail then you clear your rifle climb up the ladder and then you've got your first target is like 200 yards 250 Three hundred something, four hundred, and then four sixty nine. Four sixty nine. Holy what cow! This one was wow. Yeah. So in one stage you're going, you know, point blank, to, 
you know, far out. Same same weapon, same everything. Mm-hmm. You know, so that was that was fun. That was, it was one of the cool. funnest ones. Were the, I, I agree. Were the far targets just steel? Yeah. So it was either impact or no impact. That was yep. it. Yep. So Kirk was up there with a spotting scope, and he would tell you, you know, impact or not. Cool. So that's awesome. Yeah, it was really really cool. We had discussed that one a lot, just where to place shots, and it was just fun to have Kirk there too, just like hit. So were you yeah, guys hit, hitting? Cool. Were you guys hit. hitting? I hit all the one. Yard? Tyler hit all. That's of them. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. It was Way fun. cool. And then as soon as that's over, uh, you go stage your rifle yep. onto Put your rifle on a table and go run. Yep. So Big on the long minutes. on the long shooting, did you have like a yardage chart or table with you, or did you just ahead of time look at where you needed to hold on your reticle, or did you dial elevation, or what did you guys do on that? Definitely didn't dial elevation. <laughs> I just aimed high. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. So we talked. About I kind of knew before. about where my shots not out to i mean I've, I've i've don't think i've ever shot my my rifle past 300 yards mm-hmm. but so that was just guesswork but i kind of knew 200 you know hold a tiny bit over 300 hold you know around the first notch 400 it was just kind of guesswork so yeah. you could kind of see your dust you know nobody was calling your shots for you but you could kind of see where you'd hit and so yeah it was cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, it was it went a lot better than I thought it would. It did for me too, and I honestly think it's just that we talked about it so much. Yeah. And we're like, okay, really, the first three shots, slightly high, but then those last two, top of the target, next one, inch above the target, mm-hmm. and we should be good. Yeah, we kind of had a strategy. Yeah. We kind of talked to, talked it through. And then one. that run was, I don't want to say grueling, but. You know, it's it's a trail run, yeah, so it's definitely it's not just a normal run. You start going down this big, huge hill, you hit a cattle guard, and then it's just kind of some slow up for a mile and a half. Mm-hmm. And then a slow down a mile and a half. Yeah, you turn around and come back the same way you came. Yeah. But it wasn't, you know, that the one we did last year had kind of some, you know, you kind of had to go up a little cliff and then down a steep thing, and, you know, it had some challenges that you had to do. It wasn't just running. This one was just right on a road, basically, and you're just you just run yeah. or waddle. Hmm. Yeah, you know that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that event for me was something that had never happened to me before. I don't know what it was; it just something hit in me, and I I went to where I would have redlined, like redlined, passed out, and I just took it one notch below that and just held it the entire time. It was really cool. It was kind of like a, a zone that I've never been in. Now, obviously, that zone was not very fast, <laughs> um, but, you know, didn't stop running. Just kept pretty much the same pace, whether it was up or down. And it was, it was pretty cool, pretty cool to feel that. And then to still be able to give kind of a push at the end. So That's awesome. I mean, it's super slow, like uh, probably <clears throat> uh, an 11-minute mile pace. But you know you you are wearing it's a it's a trail and you are wearing a vest and a belt. Mm-hmm. So. Cool. But it was fun. Yeah, that was maybe one of my funnest events. Even though I'm not, I don't like to run. <laughs> Next stage was Utah two parter. Oh yeah, so that's that one. That's that one. Yeah, this one was interesting because you <clears throat> for for the intermediate guys and for mine. You lift the sandbags over, do kind of a sequence of that, and then you go shoot. Come back, lift sandbags over, go shoot, lift them over. And then everybody was finishing, you know, and then you'd have extra time, and that's when you got to choose if you wanted to take a break for, a, you know, you'd have a, usually everyone had a couple minutes. Or you could go back and throw some more sandbags over, and each sandbag over was another point. And so everybody had time to do some extras. But I judged the elite right after mine. And those guys had to do, that's when they had to do the 250 pound bag. And so I don't think any of those guys had any time left over. I mean, it was taking them everything they had to get through the the initial sandbags over because theirs were so much heavier. And so it was, they had a rough, they had a tough time doing it. It was, Mm. it was grueling. The guy I judged, he's a young guy and strong, but he couldn't get that 250 over. Mm. So they, they would allow you to do the 200 pound four times to count for one. 
Oh wow! And e- but even then, yeah, I mean, that's to get a lot. Two hundred pounder over is no joke. So how many so, times did you have to go over with the two fifty? Once, just once, once. over. Or well, four with the once two each round. You yeah, had to do it a total of two times with the two fifty. Okay. If you completed all the rounds, but a lot of guys they only got through three rounds. Hmm. So the guy I was judging, he he did well, but he only got to shoot three times because he spent quite a bit of time trying to get that two fifty over, and then he gave up on that and just did the the two hundred over four times, and he was spent after that. Hmm. So he didn't have any extra time for extra points. So then he had to go right to the other, the second part, which was you know suitcase carrying with a sandbag. And you had to crawl, you had to set it down, crawl under a thing, kind of army crawl under a thing, carry it some more, come back, lift it up over the thing. It was that, and that was nine minutes of that. And what do you think? It was like maybe 25 yards to the pirouette, crawl under the pirouette, 25 yards to the other side. And then on the way back, it's 25 yards. You're still carrying that sandbag. But then you have to take that sandbag and step it over top of... Hmm. And so it was pretty cool. It was grueling. There, there was some strategy there. Definitely. Like, if you let the bag go behind your back, you were lit. Hmm. Your back was lit. My, ba- my back was lit. <laughs> Just spinal. Huh. <laughs> it was spinal. <laughs> I broke my back. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, Mike. That was tough. But I had Tyler had some extra time, so he went and lifted a bunch over. Bunch of sad bags over. Yeah, I was trying to be as strategic as I could. I, you know, I had some time, so I went and did six extra points, and then that gave me thirty seconds to get back to the starting line before the ni- the nine minutes started. Um, one full length was three points, so I figured, you know, if I could do six sandbags, that's two full mm-hmm. lengths. So mm. I, th- I think strategy wise, it was yeah. Fine. I think it. I think it's a good thing to do. I wasn't planning on it, but I went back and did, I think I did four, and I, but I used up all my time, so I was late to the other stage, but I didn't care. I was so tired by yeah, that anyway. Yeah, which might be okay. I mean, strategically, too, you know, you, that's, one full, that's one full length uh, yeah. that, you, that you got out of that, yeah. plus, plus one. So, yeah, that one was tough strategically to, to really know what to do. Hmm. Yeah. I wasn't excited to start that nine minutes of dragging the thing. And, mm-hmm. so. No. And that one, it was nice because they let you take off your belt and your pistol. That first one we went to, you had to do burpees with your pistol. My pistol got so dirty. Yeah. It was just dirty inside and out everywhere from doing burpees in it. And so yep. on this one, they let you take it off and before you had to army crawl under that thing. So I appreciated that. There's no need to get... I mean, I don't care if my pistol gets dirty, but... Yeah. Well, especially <laughs> guys that have a red dot poking up. I mean, they're yeah. kind of exposed and yeah. gets jammed full of crap. But those the elites had a they had they made them do some hard stuff. Huh. And actually, the, in the email before you know they send you an email a few days before they said elites you you're gonna have to pick up a 250 pound bag during this. So if you want to go to uh, intermediate, it's your last chance to do that. <laughs> I, I don't come to I, my division. <laughs> yeah. What I understand is none of them did, right? I think yeah, they, some of them I, did. Oh, yeah. did they? Yeah, they there were a couple up. guys that I did it. You. Yeah, several of them did. Hmm. Or at least the tactical. Hopefully they didn't go oh, clear down. Oh, you mean went down? Oh, I thought you meant if they were able to get that 250 over. No, I mean that dropped out of the division. Oh, I don't yeah, think. I, don't know. I saw a post where none of them did. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> Kudos to that. You know, yeah. a lot. You know, some of the guys you could tell had, you know, in some, you know, CrossFit sometime have done that. Knew how to handle yeah, it. There, there's yeah, there's some technique sure. involved to it. Sure. And my guy, he told me, he's like, I've never done done a bag like that before he's a really yeah. young guy really strong but you know he didn't quite know the strength he got way better at lifting the 200 one over the 200 it took him two or three tries the first time he did it and then he got to where he was doing it you know every single time the first try he got mm. better at it during the so ha- you know having done it before having some exposure to it helps you a lot getting that get there's some technique yeah that's so cool he learned it but it was you know, on the job training. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's cool that they throw stuff like that in. Um, I've always used a rower because of CrossFit, but in my first tactical games, we had to do a 500 meter row for time with a weight vest on mm. and totally changes the stimulus mm. when you put a weight vest on. 
but there's guys that I competed against that had never rode. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, just went and crushed them because they'd never rode. They yeah. didn't know the technique now, and got guy, burned yeah, out. And now, other guys there that did know the technique that crushed me anyways, but <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. It helps. The, the only thing I don't think I'd ever done is throw that sandbag up over my head. Yeah. So that, that a, was... It seemed like an awkward thing just yeah, watching the awkward, video but, of it. And I was worried about it before I started doing it, and then I started doing it. I was like, oh, okay. I guess I am pretty strong and I can do this. Yeah. So you, you know, and every, everybody learned how to do it. Some, some people had, a, you know, it took them a few tries the first time they did it. And then you, you learn how to do it. The best is when someone would throw it and it would, it would literally land on top. Yeah. And they had to go push it. <laughs> oh off. yeah. Oh, It'd oh, get yeah. hung up on yeah. top. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I had any misses though. Like I got it over. It touched a either. couple times, but didn't have any misses. But well, I was getting tired towards the end. Yeah, oh yeah. It was tiring. I mean, what a great training for mindset you know mindset and physically for life you know i mean we a lot of we train a lot of times so that we're ready for real world situations well you're never going to know what a real world situation is going to yeah. require you don't know if you're going to have to drag somebody out of a building you don't know if you're going to have to you know what it's going to be yeah. so i mean what a great way to be you know just have the mindset of okay i'll figure it out when i get there and yep go for it you know and yep. figure it out on the go yeah, I totally agree. Oh, cool. yeah, they make, it's neat when you when you have something like that. You, you're like, man, I've never done that before, and you're worried about it, and then you start doing it, and you you know most people get you know they can get it figured out. It's yeah, fun. It feels good. For yeah, sure, the adaptability is pretty pretty awesome. Um, last normal stage was called the tactical two gun 100 points, uh, literally. A a two gun event. So Okay. Zero fitness in that one. Yeah. It was fun. Yep. Athletes start with an empty pistol and a hot ri rifle at low ready. At the audible, uh, athletes will engage the steel target at the end. So pretty much there was a, a steel target pretty far away. So you could zoom all the way in and you shoot until you hit that target. Once you've hit that target, then you go through and you start shooting uh, two shots into silhouette targets mm -hmm. as you're going through the course. Then you get halfway through the course, you get to a tire and you drop your magazine. So you have one round left and that's about 50 ish yards there. Yeah. I'd say so, you know, I'm zero to 50, so it should be dead on. Um, so then you shoot at that. And then once you've done that, you retain your magazine and you get your pistol and you start through a pistol course and that was steel and had some knockdowns cardboard steel and, uh -huh. and cardboard ones hmm. then you get to the very end you clear your pistol you grab your rifle they had kind of this ladder that you could set up on and then there were four four or five four or five steel, shoot them, steel so targets know. at various ranges yeah matt <laughs> matt got a little bit screwed over he was shooting in the dark so i was the very oh, last one really? to go on that one shoot the last competitor i mean li like li <laughs> and, and honestly like if you would have pushed it which you you're just not that kind of person they they probably would have given you the shots yeah, because maybe. it was so dark. I mean, it was <laughs> it was dark. You couldn't see those targets. Like wow. those last targets, he couldn't see them through. And I timed out so. anyway. I for intermediates they didn't have a time cap for the for my age they did for yeah. them. It was 120 seconds, two minutes. Yeah, I would have I would have timed out too hmm. if if we were in the same division. Hmm. So, but it was it was still fun. They that one, you know, they kind of they didn't realize how long it was going to take. And it got hours behind. It was like, three, it was supposed to, yeah, three, three hours, hours behind. behind. It was, it was a, supposed it to was, finish at six. It was the master's divisions packing their walkers around. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> These guys <laughs> waddling up the trail. <laughs> no, it's, it is hard. I don't know how they stay on track because there's that's just tough. things that come up, yep. you know, mm -hmm. and it just, uh, they do a pretty good job really do. doing it they on do. all the ones that I've been to. Yep, I agree. And it, but yeah. So then there was a floater and an aggregate. Is that yeah. was there one of, one of each of those? One of each. The floater was the second day. Floater was worth fifty points. You have ninety seconds to move a Husafelt stone, which was actually a Husafelt sandbag. Yeah, it was a bag. Which okay. was actually it did look a little kinda, weird. Kind of nice. A yeah. uh, hundred yards out and back. If the athlete finishes before the ninety seconds. 
the time will be converted to points. One point per yard, one point for every second under the time cap. Yeah, they didn't do it. They didn't do it like that. That was different. They just did max time. They did 90 seconds as far as you can go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Cool. And that one was... That my back hurts just thinking about that. <laughs> just like picking that thing up. I picked it up two or three times because I took breaks, and man, each time was just oh, I shouldn't have set it down, but I was tired. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> well, it seems like there was a lot of lower back burners, like yeah. that one that you had to roll backwards. Yeah, and, I mean there was a lot of a lot it of back was work. Very lower back yeah. intensive. After the sandbag over the yoke and the the carries the yeah. the carries and going underneath like i was to where i i, I was like i can't walk and it so was, i went and laid in the trailer <laughs> on like this this pokey That's mat right. thing for like 20 minutes and then i could walk hmm. but um the aggregate was it was good um for me it was just really confusing i'm not, i'm just not very smart um <laughs> so on yeah this the, was a mind one <laughs> On the audible sound, athletes will draw and engage the 20 yard target with the rifle firing one shot in the head box, drawing the pistol and engaging near to far two rounds at each center circle, starting at the seven and then the 15 and then the 20, respectively. Athletes will holster the pistol before and perform a mag change with the rifle, then engaging the near to far targets with two rounds in each head box starting with the seven and then the 15 and then the 20. So it was far headshot then with a rifle, then pistol, body, 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 rifle, mag change, head, 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 head. This is the one where you need to know how to shoot your rifle close up. Yeah. You need to know at seven yards, I need to aim above the head otherwise you're not going to hit right. the head. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with what, what was it 10, 12 or and then 20. Yeah. So each time you've got to hold up above you know cuz it's not just hit the target it hits it's hit the head. So you've got a 4 inch basically you know window vertical feet, you know vertical wise where you're going to hit it. Yeah. So well, and that is kind of a confusing sequence. I mean, you got to be yeah, it thinking took, through it took, that. Like, I really had to think through it, and I don't know why. Everyone else is mm. like, it's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. that, that's fun, though. That's kind of, you know, just you stand there in one place. It's kind of like doing the steel challenge. Yeah. You you don't move. You just stand there and shoot shoot quickly. And, you know, for the for some of those steel, steel shooters and those USPSA guys, they man, they... It took people, you know, took me 30 seconds. They'll do it in like eight seconds. Yeah. Some of those UFP guys do all of, you know, they are so fast. One interesting thing with this aggregate as well, one of the judges told me um, to, to tr- really not try to be that accurate because it was only a one and a half second penalty per miss. So if you were just like blasting through it and you hit three quarters of the shots, mm-hmm. you win. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like the normal rounds where if you miss a shot, it's 10 seconds. Mm. You, know, you miss six shots, you just missed a whole minute. Hmm. I wonder what the math would be if you just didn't hit any, You just and you did it in like, you know, seven seconds. Yeah, I, who knows? <laughs> Probably we, better than my We should have done that math. <laughs> hmm. Well, we should set it up and try it. That's, that's the cool that, That's what we should set up and, and do it a bunch of times. Yeah. I'll go out to the desert and set it up and just try it. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I totally agree. What was your favorite event? Um, I liked the uh, that the the carbine one where you yeah. go through. You know, you're walking along this course, you're shooting really close, you know, to you, and then you run up and shoot that long range. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I agree. Just you know, dig your magazine into the dirt and rest it. Yeah. You know, and just calm your breathing down and just pull that trigger and shoot those far shots and hear it ting. They even, they had, the, they had light up targets. So you'd hit them and they'd light up. That was cool. That was really. So was it like the light up, like what, at the sniper challenge? Yeah. It was like, like those? Yep. That's cool. Those are fun. Yeah. We those those get, are fun to hit. Bu- we ought to buy some of those. They're, yeah, and they're probably them. really expensive. They probably are, but they are cool that you can, that they, fla- those flashers. They're neat. Yeah. Hmm. I wish I would have hit that last one, but. 
afterward, after I was done, he told me, you know, I took like three or four shots at it. And he's like, all those shots were just below the target because he was looking with a spotting scope at him. Hmm. You know, he, he's not going to tell you during. He's like, right, he can't call Just below. You. Yeah. But, you know, afterwards, I wish I would have just aimed. You know, I can't believe how, how far my rifle will shoot consistently. Yeah, so I've never tried to shoot it out that far, this particular rifle. Yeah. It's a Palmetto State. I mean, it's not a fancy yeah. <laughs> machine. Oh, you it's have a, a fancy it's a nice one. Machine. Yeah, I've got a, I have a fancy one. Yeah. challenge, but it's not the same. But one. on this one, you had to go, you had to shoot these close ones, you know, point blank. And then same scope, same everything. Go shoot those long distances. It's that it was cool. Yeah, it was fun. That's awesome. What was your favorite one then, Tyler? I actually think the same. And then just mentally, that the run on that one. Hmm. Like I know just it was because you felt so just, good and you got in the zone. Good, yeah. yeah, yeah, just the zone. Um, I did like that first one too. I mean, it took me a little second to get into the groove, but after that first round, I felt like I could just cruise and still shoot good. So that was fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I was pretty nervous the, cool. the morning of because I didn't. It took me a couple of, I didn't shoot and I didn't do a stage to, for like three hours after the stage briefing, and I've, I had like three hours to get nervous about the whole thing. So I was like, hmm. why, "Why do I do this?" Anticipation. Why do I come here and put myself under this stress? And then I started going and do, did my first one, which was the throw it over your head. I was like, "Oh, okay, I can do this." That's the funny thing about it, it is you. You sign up because you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go do this. And then this is a good idea. You're there, and then you're like, I'm never doing yeah. this again. And yeah. then Why did I do this? By the time it's over, you're like, all right, I'm signing up for the next one. <laughs> That's how, like, from two weeks out until it's time like time to go down and compete, I'm the same way. I'm like, this is so dumb. <laughs> so what's your what's your guys' plan next? Are you you got more that you're planning on doing this summer? Or I'd like to do that, that uh, Las Vegas one. Yeah, me too. If I can yeah. get my body accustomed to the heat. Yeah. But... You know, I really need to learn how to shoot. I need to get with somebody that can, you know, some of these USPSA guys that just, you know, are so accurate and so fast. I don't necessarily, I don't need to be fast, but I need to be accurate. I need to be able to stand there and put holes in the target, you know, yeah. at 10 yards consistently. Yeah. If I can do that, I'll feel a lot better about the way things are going. My fitness, you know, I'm probably not going to, you know, I've been going to CrossFit for seven years and... It is what it is at this point. <laughs> I'm going to keep work, you know, working hard. Keep it, going, yeah. You know, but I'm pretty consistent with that, and you know, I need to work on the shooting and take some runs. It wouldn't hurt me to. <laughs> yeah, run I, could, a bit. I could run more too. <laughs> no, that I think that shooting aspect is is the it's just so important. You know, sometimes you'll get people that are really trying to shoot and they're just having a tough time. But then you'll get other people that are like, I just got to go fast. Boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. Yeah. Like, That's not oh, a good, oh man, yeah. no, slow That's down. not a good way to do it. Yeah. You can't make up your shots with your fitness. No uh -huh. matter how fit you are, you, you've you got to shoot. You've yeah. got to shoot accurately. And it seems like you don't have to do super good on everything. As long as you do okay yeah. on everything. You know, you don't yes. have to be very top, which is kind of a mind game, you know. But I'll bet you a lot of the guys that win probably didn't win an event but they were in the top three yeah maybe on every event or something like that yeah. but you can totally win without being without winning an totally. event. totally and it is interesting what two large mistakes will will yeah. do um i was just looking back through some scores and everything and um so i made two big mistakes ones that i can learn from not like safety mistakes so that's cool like you know you make a safety mistake that's bad. Mm -hmm. But um, on your gun, one... Your gun flops out. Yeah. They'll send you home. On one, it was on that intervals that I did okay on. Um, but I, I uh, shot into someone else's target six times. Mm -hmm. And finally, my my judge was like, you're shooting the wrong target. I'm like, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Who should have told me that five <laughs> shots ago? <laughs> um so there was that one. I mean, that was, you know, definitely, you know, that's 60 seconds. That's 60 seconds off. That, yeah, and then lo looking at that workout, that would have bumped me up like a good 10 spots. Um, then the other one was that uh, two-gun course. Just a, such a dumb mistake. That first long shot, I, ha I was all zoomed in at, at mm. 10 because I'm a 0 to 10 uh, scope. And I just didn't turn it back to zero. Just so stupid. And so I'm like, 
I can't find like my eye relief. This is so weird. I can't find the target. And then I'm like, I think that's cardboard. Do do. Okay, I think that's cardboard. Do do. And then I was like, I can't do this anymore. So it was close enough that I could actually <laughs> just like look down my barrel and shoot. Yeah. And that's what I ended up doing. <laughs> and mm. you you just have to hit somewhere on the target. So th- those are meant to just go fast, yeah. super fast. Yeah. And so I could have gone so much faster if I would have actually been able to see the targets. Um, but that was cool because then, you know, once I get to the end to zoom in <laughs> to shoot those last four or five targets on the ladder, I was like, oh, I never changed this back to zero. <laughs> you're trying to zoom in and you're like, yeah. it's already zoomed. And then hit all of those shots. I'm like, I can hit shots. I can't I believe just... you didn't realize that, uh, you know, looking know. through it. <laughs> that timer yeah, goes off and your brain yep. just goes into a it different... Does. Yeah. gear you know it's it's really hard to it does which which is actually pretty disappointing to me because my whole life has been you know paramedic stuff and like this kind of stuff and so it's like i should have a little sharper mind but <laughs> whatever well, yeah it's just situational you know i mean your mind gets used to the paramedic stuff you yeah. did you, you know like all of us we did stupid mistakes when we first went out on the EMT call or the paramedic call. Yeah. And so it's just getting it to where it's used to hearing the buzzer and all that. I really felt like that's what helped me the most was us going to the USPSA matches last year. You know, it's like, you're just not last year in St. George. I, the biggest mistake I made was on the, the aggregate or whatever. And it was the simplest one, just like you're saying, you know, it was, it was like two shots, two shots, two shots, with the pistol and then two shots, two shots, two shots with the rifle. And I did them out of sequence. And you and I did the time. same thing. And it was because of the pressure of the yep. buzzer. Yep. And so I think that that's huge is just practicing that. Your yeah. I remember like, my judge was like, Hey, that was some great shooting. You just did it in the wrong <laughs> order. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I did too. And so I think it like pretty much gave me a zero. Yeah. You know? And uh, so anyway, but it's fun. It is um, fun. It's good for your well, brain. You, you guys are awesome. I think it's way cool that you guys went down and did that. I wish I could have been there. We uh, really wish it was, could have been as well. It was fun to watch the updates and see you guys rocking it. And we'll get together and hopefully you do like the, the Pahrump one or something like that this year. So that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We need to make that happen. So at least just get out and shoot a little bit. I still kind of want that Montana. Yeah. The sniper one. I've been thinking about that too. I'm not sure on that one yet, but uh, the Pahrump one, I I'd love to go and do that. So, yeah, yeah, I kind of I like the more I like the traditional ones a little better. I, the the sniper was fun. Yeah, it's a little bit more equipment driven. Yeah, than kind of what I'm and less fitness. Yeah, it's, it's it's more just a shoot. Yeah, but yeah, I can't decide if I'm gonna go up there or not. But anyway. Pick your cool. battles. Yeah. I mean, that's we live in a world where yeah, you can't do everything. Gotta, Too many fun things to do. If I could make a living doing this, then it'd be a little easier to say, let's go to all of them. Yeah, um, it's a big time and money commitment. And yeah. So, well, cool. Like I said, good job, guys. You guys are awesome. Right back at you. Yeah, this it was fun. We are awesome. It was fun to chat. We'll make it happen <laughs> again in the future. So, sounds cool. good. All right. (laughs) We'll see you guys. See ya.